I bought my Peloton Bike Plus four months ago, but before that, I used my parents' Peloton for a couple of years. I've logged over 180 rides and I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Four years ago, I would dread exercising, but now I've exercised over 950 consecutive days and it's something that I look forward to each morning. There's no question that Peloton at least played a small factor in changing my attitude towards working out. You're probably thinking the same exercise benefits can be found with something more affordable, and you're definitely right. The Peloton bike itself is expensive, and it requires a monthly subscription fee. So in this video, I'll go over the five main reasons why you should get the bike, and then a few reasons why it might not be for you. Peloton has something for everybody. The Peloton instructors are world-class motivators and they all have interesting personalities. Not every instructor will be a good fit for you, but you'll eventually, after a few weeks, find your go-to instructor who you'll love. There are at least five new cycling classes posted per day, and there's an entire archive of all the previously recorded classes available on demand. Each class has a different difficulty level that's displayed when you tap on the class. There are hill rides, beginner, advanced beginner, low impact, Tabata, and my personal favorite, the high intensity interval training classes. Most classes are structured around a certain type of music and there are about 10 different genres of music to choose from. The difficulty of the ride will change depending on your cadence, which is the speed of your legs, and the resistance, which is how tough it is to pedal. The resistance can be changed by twisting the knob left or right. And as you go through a ride, the instructor will let you know when it's time to increase the resistance or bring it down, but there's also indicators on the screen. And the numbers that the instructors provide to you are just a baseline. You'll have to do whatever's comfortable with you, and that's why it's good for everybody. And if you want a day off from cycling, there's yoga, strength, hit, pilates, core, and other exercises to do off the bike. And once you find an instructor who you click with, you'll probably want to check out their other classes that happen off the bike and you might discover exercises that you never knew you would like. The main reason people claim that they don't exercise is because they don't have time. And this is a lame excuse to begin with, but once you own a Peloton, you're not allowed to make this excuse anymore. Just turn on the screen, tap on your username, clip in your pedals, pick a class, and then pedal for 20 to 30 minutes. And if you think about it, 30 minutes is just 2% of your day. Anybody should be able to find time to do that. With a Peloton, you no longer have to drive to the gym, and this means bad weather and traffic are no longer your concern. And you don't have to wait at the gym for somebody to get off your favorite piece of equipment. Now your favorite piece of equipment is always ready for you. And an extra bonus is that you don't have to deal with any awkward conversations or anybody that you don't wanna deal with that you might see at a gym. With a Peloton, everything is done on your time and at your convenience. A few other reasons why people claim that they don't exercise often is because they get bored easily, they're not motivated, or they just don't wanna work out alone. But Peloton fixes these issues by gamifying the experience and just making it more fun overall. You can ride while a class is live, but each class is recorded and can be taken on demand if you can't be there while it happens live. For those who are competitive, each class has a leaderboard on the right side of the screen where it shows where you stand amongst the other riders. And even if you're not in the live session, the leaderboard updates as if you were in the original session. For example, the leaderboard shows the real-time output for each rider at each specific point in the ride. It's like you're riding with the other riders, even though they might've completed the class days ago. When you're riding in an on-demand class, you might be riding with up to 30,000 people. And sometimes it just feels like you're competing against a computer, because 30,000 people is so many people. But to address this issue, Peloton came out with a new feature called sessions that are available every five minutes for each class. It's usually under 10 people, so it seems more real than if there were 30,000. And I always find it a little bit extra motivating because I don't want the 10 clowns behind me to pass me, so I always find myself pumping just a little bit harder. But the great part about Peloton is if you're not competitive or maybe you find some of these features gimmicky, you can just hide anything you want 
and put it off the screen. And some days you're just not feeling it and you just wanna get a quick ride in so you can hide that leaderboard and just compete against yourself or just have a casual ride. Peloton logs your output and other performance stats for each ride and it tracks your personal best and keeps track of any streaks. And once you hit your 100th ride milestone, you'll even get a free t-shirt. Peloton has groups too. You can join an existing group or create your own. Each group is represented with a hashtag and it appears on your profile page. It's a cool way to compete with friends and hold everybody accountable. And a lot of these groups exist outside of Peloton and you can find them on Facebook groups and on Twitter. Peloton's combination of the giant community, great instructors, groups, leaderboards, awards, just all help to gamify and keep you motivated and interested in exercising more often. It sounds stupid, but it's a lot easier to pedal faster when somebody's telling you to, and you know everybody else in the group is doing it too. Like I've said when I've talked about the Apple Watch, ideally we shouldn't need to gamify exercise and we just naturally do it because it means our bodies will be healthier. But if we're making better decisions for our health because of the tech, does it really matter where our motivation comes from? I don't think so. And let me just be a Peloton fanboy for a couple minutes. Because Peloton has the largest community right now, it's gonna continue to grow exponentially. And the network effect is already kicked in. If all your friends are on Facebook, why would you wanna be on MySpace? The same thing is happening with Peloton. Everyone's gonna to wanna to be where their friends are and right now Peloton is where people are going. And because of Peloton's huge market share, they can attract and retain the best instructors in the world and entice them to stay on their platform. I can't speak directly to the quality of Peloton's competitors because I haven't tried them. I'm sure Echelon and Nordic Track have fine bikes, but there's no question that Peloton's bike is a well-built machine. There are a couple exceptions like the cup holder and the weight holder that feel cheesy, but almost everything else looks and feels well-built. The seat and screen can be adjusted easily and they always feel sturdy. How about longevity? Well, I can't speak to my bike plus because I've only had it for four months, but my parents have had the original bike for almost three years and it's held up perfectly. It looks great and it works just like new. If you have the whoop strap, you can get your heart rate from your whoop to show up on the Peloton screen. And if you have the Bike Plus and the Apple Watch, you can do the same thing by getting it on the left-hand side of the screen. And there are integrations with Apple Music and Spotify as well. With your music account signed in, when you hear a song during a ride, you can just tap the heart button and the song gets added to a playlist for you. And I'd expect way more integrations as Peloton continues to grow. For example, it'd be nice to play your own Apple Music or Spotify through the Peloton speakers when you're in one of the scenic rides. The bike is $18.95 or the Bike Plus is $24.95. And it gets more expensive because the Peloton shoes are $150 and you'll need multiple pairs if you have multiple people riding. Even the mat for the bike to sit on is $60. You don't need the official Peloton gear, but you'll still need to buy shoes from somewhere. Fortunately, the shoes and other accessories can be bundled with the bike and you can pay in payment plans for as low as $49 a month with no interest. Once you pay for the bike, Peloton requires a monthly subscription of $39 a month. The good news is that you can add everybody in your household onto this plan for free and you don't have to pay any additional money. But without the subscription fee, the pedals will move, but none of your activity will be logged and you can't take any of the classes. So without the subscription, you've essentially turned your Peloton into a normal stationary bike with a blank screen. $39 a month seems like a lot of money, especially after you just dropped $2,000 for the bike, but let's put things into perspective. Budget gyms like Planet Fitness are close to $10 a month, but the average gym fee in the US is about $65 a month. And the average spin class is $20 a session. And more specifically, the average soul cycle class is $30 a month. So even if you're only spinning a couple times a week, you're looking at over $150 a month to spin on somebody else's bike. If you're someone who spins, unless you place a high value on that in-person aspect with your friends, Peloton makes way more sense. It took me about three months to get my Peloton Bike Plus after ordering it. Current wait times are down to two weeks on the regular bike or eight weeks on the Bike Plus, but this is still way too long. 
And to make matters worse, Peloton doesn't have a dedicated delivery team. My bike was delivered by two guys who didn't speak English, and due to that language barrier, they couldn't show me how to use it, and they couldn't answer any questions for me. They rushed to move it inside the house and plug it in as quick as possible, and then they got out. And they actually went so quickly that they forgot to put one of the feet on my Peloton, so I couldn't use it for a week. Luckily, when I reached out to Peloton support, they hooked me up with a foot, but it took a week to come in. Not everyone will have a bad experience with the delivery like I did, but that's kind of the point. Peloton needs a standardized process. I'd like to see the people who deliver it at least have a little bit of knowledge about how the Peloton works, so that they can answer basic questions. This is a big investment, and I'm sure this process will eventually get refined and fixed, but for right now, it's not good enough. My biggest issue with Peloton is nice weather, and this has nothing to do with the bike itself. There are tons of Pelotoners who use their bike year round, but I don't think I'll use it much during the summer. I live in the Northeast, and as soon as it gets a little bit warm outside, I'd much rather be biking or running or hiking outside. I just prefer the sun and fresh air compared to being stuck inside when I'm exercising. This will be my first summer owning the Peloton, so we'll have to see how it plays out during the summer. But as of right now, I only plan to use it when it's rainy or if I just have a, the intense urge to do a quick hit ride. It feels silly to spend $39 a month to only use it once a week. But the only other option is to pause my subscription. But then if I actually do want to ride it in the summer, I won't be able to. I'd feel worse having a $2,000 bike in my house that I couldn't use than I would if I just pay the $39 a month even if I don't use it often. So this whole issue of nice weather and wanting to be outside is probably just a me issue, but if you like exercising outside, this is just something to consider. $2,000 for the bike and then $500 a year for every year that you wanna use it is a bit pricey. It feels a little bit better if you're paying in monthly installments, but pair that with the monthly subscription of $39 and you're looking at at least $100 a month. Looking at this rationally, somebody like me who's self-motivated and who likes to exercise outside for half the year probably shouldn't buy a Peloton because it's not the best value. With that being said, I love my Peloton and I wanna keep it forever. Could I find more affordable ways to exercise? Yeah, definitely. But this bike makes me happy and keeps me healthy. Now let's look at some math to help rationalize this purchase. If I ride on it four times per week during the cold months, and then one time per week during the warm months, that's about 130 rides per year. Let's say I keep this pace for five years and have the regular bike. That's about $6.50 per ride, which sounds great. But the math looks even better if my fiance rides the same amount that I do during that five year stretch. That'll bring the cost all the way down to $3 per ride. And that's pretty tough to beat. If you lack exercise motivation and you need the full power of the Peloton Colt behind you, you won't regret your purchase. You won't find a better value of your time than the 30 minutes that you spend on that bike. Sure, $100 a month sounds expensive, but if it helps keep you healthy and extends your life longer, I mean, you can't really put a price on that. I've watched the Peloton bike help motivate my parents to exercise more often, and it even helped kickstart my obsession with exercising three years ago. If you exercise every day without the need for external motivation, the Peloton probably isn't a necessity for you, but it's still a lot of fun if you can afford it. And if you have any competitiveness in you at all, it's a must have. So now you want a Peloton, which version should you go with? I'm the owner of the Bike Plus, but I recommend the regular bike because the Bike Plus is just not worth that extra $600. And if you wanna learn more about the differences between these two bikes, that'll be my next video next week. And if you do end up going with the Peloton, I'll leave a promo code below and that'll give you $100 off your purchase if you get accessories with your bike. So it's essentially like a free pair of shoes. So let me know if you have any other questions about the Peloton. I'll be active in the comments answering anything you have. Thanks for watching this video. I'm out.